All right, everyone, back to the Vermont gubernatorial election, which still, my prediction is, there's a 99% chance we get Phil Scott 2.0. Better than Halquist, maybe, but, you know, it's basically like judging a turd next to a turd. I'm gonna, I, I'm encouraging people to write in my name, Tarl Warwick, because I'm like, oh, if I can get 100 people to vote for me and then they have to, like, release my name, actually, on the final forms that they put out, that'll be fucking hilarious. I'll definitely, I'll frame a copy of it and laugh about it endlessly. Um, the, the, Halquist, who's the Democratic candidate, first transgendered candidate from a major party. We gotta put in from major party. It's like when they're like, well, first gay candidate for X, Y, or Z. It's like, it's almost always that an independent run or a third party, usually libertarian run, predates the, the supposed, uh, you know, ground changing political event. Uh, so th this is the first major party transgendered candidate. And I oppose Halquist heavily. Not because of that, I don't give a fuck. I, I literally don't give a shit. I do give a shit about the fact that Halquist thinks that a $15 an hour minimum wage is a good idea, which would massively raise the cost of goods, cause unemployment in this state to probably double, and people will take their money towards other states where things will cost less. Especially New Hampshire, no sales tax. People already do that. What do you think happened to White River Junction? You look, look at White River Junction and then look at Lebanon. They should be economically similar. They're just right across the fucking Connecticut River from one another. On the Vermont side, it's considerably more dingy. There's a lot less to do because everyone goes in shops in Lebanon unless they want a couple of tourist places. And because of the economic downturn from the differential on sales tax and the differential in everything else, really, uh, there's no way for even touristy businesses usually to compete. They're, they're, else, they're over in Woodstock or something further from the border. You go to the interior of the state, like even here in Rutland, things are okay. You get near the edge of the state and you can have some problems. Burlington aside, because, you know, not everyone wants to fucking pay a ferry. They'd rather drive uh, places. Uh, they'll never build another bridge right across uh, Lake Champlain because that would, that would destroy Burlington's economy and they fucking know it. Here's the thing. She's claiming she gets death threats. Well, you know, I'm transgendered, so people are threatening to kill me and stuff. 99% chance that the vast majority of these people are not Vermonters. Again, like before when, when I'm treating on this subject, Vermonters don't give a fuck if you're gay. They don't give a fuck what your gender is. We don't get, well, I don't give a fuck if you smoke crack on the street. I, I can't be bothered enough. This is a rural fucking farming and hunting state. People leave each other alone. Good fences make good neighbors. Population density tends to be fairly low. We live up in the fucking mountains and we drink all the time. That's the true spirit of Vermont. That and, you know, the Green Mountain Boys and lots of maple syrup causing diabetes in the tourist population. Wonderful. You got a good health infrastructure. Don't worry about it too much. These threats are probably coming from other places in the United States. I blame Maine. It's got to be Maine's fault. Somehow, you know, you know, they found out that Halquist wanted to put ketchup in the beans and they got irate. They can't fucking deal with it. They insulted Stephen King, you know, the, their state hero or whatever. Uh, no, and the joking aside, though, uh, this is an extension of the toxic political atmosphere that we've been in now for, well, a couple of years. Uh, and the funny thing is, like, Halquist would probably blame Trump, say, well, people make death threats, like, political violence and intimidation have been normalized. The thing is, the left started normalizing it with the punch a Nazi uh, thing and go, you know, the counter protests always getting shovy and violent at, at Trump rallies. This was started by the left. By the further left, Halquist is a progressive so-called, in other words, a social justice warrior. Not just a garden variety Democrat, like even Sue Minter, 2016 election, ran against Phil Scott. And she got crushed by him. I think it was a seven-point <laughs> differential. And this is a solid blue state. The norm is for Democrats generally to win. Phil Scott had to pretend to be a Democrat just to win anyway. Sue Minter was basically a, a standard center-left individual on everything other than guns. On guns, she was like Bloomberg's female offspring or something. She's like, I'm going to bring New York gun control to Vermont and uh, uh, increase it. It's going to be more draconian than what you get in Chicago. Yeah, look forward to mass shootings, essentially, in a state that otherwise has very little crime. Halquist is economically to the left of Bernie Sanders, arguably. But Bernie Sanders has practically backed off from the same kind of healthcare proposal that Halquist continues to make. Shumlin, Shumlin, but more liberal than Minter, certainly, at least on a fiscal scale. Commissioned a study, threw a million dollars into it. Hey, how can we get universal healthcare in Vermont? It's a great idea, it'd be wonderful. And by the way, I'll get reelected if I pass it through. So please uh, tell me that it's feasible. 
progressives whine and, and complain and bitch, but that roughly 25% of the population was essentially told it won't work. Taxes would have to double in this state, you know. We've already got a rural state. We've got problems fucking fixing potholes right now. How the hell do you think that we can possibly do this? Especially when it's a, a, an insular monopoly regards, uh, regarding health care within the state of Vermont. There's no competition. It's basically, oh, Vermont is providing everything. They used to have this with fucking student loans with VSAC. Now they sort of sublet. By the way, that was actually less abusive, even though it was more expensive uh, at the time than the system that they have now on a national scale. Now it's all predatory by companies like... Uh, can't remember which one I use. It's in fucking Michigan or some shit. It's like, oh, yeah, the debt's not held locally. So I oppose Halquist completely. I never vote for her. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'll ultimately I'm gonna sit it out and vote for Mickey Mouse. I refuse to vote for myself. I also refuse to vote for Phil Scott because he's a turncoat on gun control. He dragged his heels on marijuana legalization. He's an asshat. And I'm not gonna vote for someone who wants to destroy the state's economy. So since I can't vote for myself, there's no libertarian gubernatorial candidate, I'm going to vote for Mickey Mouse. Other people can vote for me if they want. I refuse to do that. Some people, I wonder if Phil Scott, like, uh, voted for himself, or if he voted for Minter, you know, out of principle. Or if he just left it blank, he's like, yeah, I'll just vote for, <laughs> I'm not going to vote for my opponent, because no, he'd be like sad sack mode, he'd be like, oh, knowing my luck, she'll win by one vote, I'll be fucking myself out of this position. It'd be really funny. Uh, but I also uh, condemn the concept of sending death threats to candidates. So it doesn't matter. They'd be a communist, and I wouldn't like that. Because it's just an extension of the sort of the deplatforming and the fucking censorship and people, like, attacking each other. It's like with that Antifa member that knocked that one dude out for carrying an American flag. He's like, well, it's a flag of fascism, which is hilarious. Uh, it's like, you helped make it that way. Uh, and it was a Bernie Sanders supporter, actually, that got uh, uh, hit by the Antifa member. I wonder if that Bernie Sanders supporter will rethink their political ideology a little bit and realize just how fucked up things have become on the far left. So Halquist shouldn't be uh, subjected to them. No, you, you, you tell jokes and mock the fiscal platform because it needs to be mocked. We need people from out of state. Don't fucking call up Halquist's office and threaten or something. No, instead, why don't you write some fucking blog post about, hey, here's this whack-ass candidate from Vermont that wants to destroy their state's economy. You know, yeah, we could definitely use from some support from out of state because this state's like 70% liberals. So you got to understand, the younger liberals love uh, Halquist's platform. And even though Phil Scott's probably going to win, it's like people don't want to rock the boat. Typically, people in the state of Vermont... Uh, they'll get reelected unless they've done a piss poor job. Phil Scott is generally well received. I don't approve of him. I'm one of the Vermonters that disapproves and I voted for the dude, but I think he's got like, what, 60% approval or something? Kind of difficult threshold to get over, but Halquist shouldn't be subjected to threats or harassment or anything like that. Any more, by the way, than people on fucking YouTube should be subjected to it for their political beliefs. Instead, we allow these, these fucking NGOs and the corporate media to do it all the time. By the way, they love Halquist proposals. Probably because they hate Vermont. They're like, oh, this, these fucking mountain hippies up here, we're tired of them, says the New York Times. They didn't vote for Sue Minter, so we're going to collapse their economy by uh, making it so Halquist gets elected. Probably just hate us. That's about all. Peace out.